Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about role play games and today we're going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and arrived at Delfino Plaza where we were met with less than a warm welcome because apparently they think that we covered the entire island in goo, but clearly we did not, so we're going to go ahead and just try to track down this mysterious person who is impersonating us and see what we can get out of that. Uh, we're fighting another proto-piranha here. I actually learned this thing's name in between episodes. Uh, this uh, boss has one difference in the fact that there are two phases, but it's the same thing. Just spray it three times and you should be good. So this next area not only has an M that'll lead us to the next world, but also if you're collecting blue coins, this is the person that you're going to talk to to turn them in to get a shine sprite. I'm not though, so I'm not going to be doing that. Uh, either way, next place you want to go is probably the next uh, world here, which is... Rico Harbor, Episode 1, Gooper Blooper Breaks Out. Alrighty, first mission of a new level. This is a level that's, uh, uh, it's certainly, when I was younger, it was certainly a step up in difficulty from previous levels. Can't believe I made that gap there. Uh, this first level, uh, starts with a boss fight. There are a lot more boss fights in this game than in, Mo uh, than in uh, Mario 64, at least from what I remember. Because there was like three in the first uh, level, or first world. And here's our first boss of this world, Gooper Blooper. This guy is uh, fairly easy to deal with. You just want to spray him with water, hop on his legs so that he can't use them, and then pull on his face. I think what you're actually supposed to do is, well I know what you're actually supposed to do, is you're supposed to spray him, and then you want to grab at his tentacles and tear them off, so that that way, he's no longer able to use them, so you can grab on his face more easily. But I found that if you can uh, just jump on his legs so that he can't use them, or tentacles I should say, uh, then you can just quickly get to his face and then, there you go. Their shine number one of Rico Harbor. So funny thing, we already have enough shines to go to World 3 over there. So if you want to go ahead and start up World 3, you can head on over there and defeat the, the yet another Proto Piranha over there. But instead for me, I'm just going to hop right back into the level. Something that I recently realized is, well first let me do the title card, or not title card, but Rico Harbor Episode 2 Blooper Surfing Safari. Alrighty, blooper surfing is something that you might struggle with when you're first, uh, playing through this game because the controls can be a bit weird. Uh, first of all, there are three uh, bloopers here. The green one is the much slower one, but it's much easier to control. The pink one is, or purple I guess that would be, I'll, I'll just say pink. The pink one is much quicker, but much harder to control and much harder to make turns. And yellow is sort of a balance. For this open area right here, I'm going to go ahead and hop on the pink one. Uh, just follow the path of coins here and that'll lead you to your next area. 
Uh, one thing that I recently realized is this LP might be a lot shorter than I thought it was, because I realized that for a lot of these worlds, I can beat them in about 20 minutes, which is about the length of a typical episode. Anyways, here's the blooper surfing safari. Wahoo! You want to go for a ride, bud? Go ahead and jump on the blooper you like best. Go on! Show me some super blooper surfing and win yourself a prize! So for this area, I'm going to go ahead and use the yellow one. We're on a time limit here. I believe 45 seconds is the time we need to beat. Uh, so I'm going for the much easier one to control. I would normally go for pink, but that one's very hard to control, and we're in a section where we need very tight controls, so this is a good alternative to that. So you can jump over areas right here, uh, just to save a bit of time. I, I almost accidentally crashed into that, whoops, uh, but we should be good from here on out. Yep. So funny thing about this guy, I'm pretty sure if you fail at the mini game, he kills you, like just instantly, and you have to go all the way back to the start of the level. <laughs> Apparently the blooper surfing safari is super intense. Shine number two. But yeah, I might be able to do this Let's Play in only like seven or eight episodes. Because, yeah, probably eight episodes. Because if I do one world per, uh, one world per episode, there's seven worlds that I can go to. Plus uh, the final level, which I'll probably make its own episode. So yeah. This is going to probably be an incredibly short LP, but you know what? That, that's probably good, because this is meant as like a relaxing LP to do- I forgot to read that card. Rico Harbor, Episode 3. The cage si shines bright. I'll get to this- I'll get to talking about this one in a second. But yeah, this is just supposed to be a super relaxing LP while I set up my next two uh, big Let's Plays. So, it's nice to have something short and easy to do while I'm- working on stuff in the background. Anyways, this is a shine that I remember having a bit of trouble with when I was younger. Uh, but since I've gotten better at the game over the years, I've gotten a bit better at traversing these different platforms. Uh, but when I was younger, these platforms were super skinny and I had a bit of trouble with uh, getting Mario to work the exact way that I wanted to him to, but now I'd say I'm a lot better at that Shine number three I Don't know if I should when I'm saying what number shine I've gotten I don't know if I should say shine number Like the total shine number like shine number 11 or if I should say the shine number for the world that we're in Anyways, we're almost halfway through this world already, and we're only like a like eight or seven minutes into the episode, so... Yeah, these levels are going by fast. Episode 4, The Secret of Rico Tower. Another secret mission. You know the drill by now. Hop into a secret area. Shadow Mario takes our stuff. Gotta go through a level without him. To easily get up to the tower, you just want to go off to the side here, uh, over by where this arrow is. Wall jump between these two steel... Would girder be the correct term? I don't know if it is. But they quickly lead up to the top here. So, this level might be a bit familiar to you, and that's because, uh, if memory serves, this level was in Super Mario Galaxy 2 for the Nintendo Wii. So those who played that game might have an easier time here. Or not, because, you know, physics are quite different from that game, and plus you got the Luma for that level, so you have a support system there. In this case, you don't really, so... Just gotta rely on pure skill. I was gonna see if I could 
if I could jump from the second gear there to all the way over to that platform. But I was just about to say that I knew that I would probably die doing that, but you know what? Died anyway. That's death number three. <laughs> All right, for real this time. From the second that I mentioned pure skill, I knew that I was gonna die already. Oh, death number four. What is it with these secret areas and having me die twice? And s similar too, because I think when I got the double death eye in the first episode, that time too, I got pretty far in the level at first and then my second death was immediately at the start. Oh, thank God there was there wasn't a third death there. I'm getting crazy with these spin jumps. I should probably just try to jump like a normal person. I'll get that one up there just because I don't trust myself with not dying here. Thankfully in Mario games, you know, deaths aren't too bad. Like getting a game over just means you have to start over from the beginning of the level. Like, it boots you back out to the, uh, hub world. Could've died there. Okay. So... Now I'm starting to get kind of sweaty here. I've run back, uh, both my lives that I lost earlier, so... Thankfully... I think there's a term for that, like... Net loss? There's no net loss here, so what would the term be for, like, it staying the same as before? Anyways, that's, uh, shine number four. I almost went right off the cliff there. Thankfully, I'm not that bad at the game. It's very weird how that cutscene takes so long for it to actually move on and allow you to play, because I know you can press A to just skip by that quickly, uh, and that's what I've been doing. But it's weird how long it lingers on that one specific spot, because I don't think any other cutscene does that. Anyways, Gooper Blooper returns. Uh, just like uh, in the first world, the boss from the very beginning makes his reappearance in episode 5. So this is the, uh, Gooper Blooper is the boss fight that I mentioned in the first episode that, uh, he makes a lot of reappearances in this game, uh, sort of like Proto Piranha. It's not as often as Proto Piranha, I think it's only one time after this that he reappears, but still, it's a good chunk of reappearances nonetheless. Forget exactly how you're supposed to get over to him normally. I always just spin jump and uh, hover nozzle my way over there. Whoop. I probably won't be able to do this anymore. Nah, okay. The main difference between Gooper Blooper's first and second fights is that when you pull on his face, it takes a bit longer. So, my strat that I did is a bit harder to pull off. But it's still possible, just like you saw there. You'll know when to let go when his eyes turn pink. Or purple, or whatever color that is. Jeez, I'm just having trouble with pink and purple today. I might be able to still make it here, though. Ah, okay, no. Maybe I'll just have to do it the normal way. Unless... Come on... Ah, okay. No, I'm just gonna... I'll probably die. So I might as well just... Okay. You only need to pull off the uh, front two tentacles. I don't think his side tentacles uh, help at all with stopping you from pulling on his face. Anyways, that's Gooper Blooper down once again. Just not his day today. <laughs>
That is shine number five. So fun, fun bit of trivia that I just remembered is that uh, the thing about entering buildings is that uh, obviously there's sort of like not really a loading screen here, but you can tell that like the the area inside of here can't be physically contained within this tiny area out here. Uh, what happens here is that when you enter the building, you're teleported to this box way high up in the sky uh, and that's the room that we see there and a fun way that you can test this is if we go inside and just take a fruit and drop it outside I think I think if you throw it outside Alright, I can't seem to get it to work, but there's tons of videos of it online, of people uh, taking fruit and chucking it outside of this building, uh, like chucking it right here, and having it uh, fall from the sky. Oh, there it was! I sort of got it to work there. I guess I just need to go back in and have it load, but uh, fruit falls from the sky and lands right there in the water, proving that the building that we walk into is actually way high up in the sky there. Anyways, back to our normal objectives. Uh, sorry that I got a bit sidetracked, but it's fun sharing, uh, you know, bits of information and stuff like that. Alrighty, episode 6, Red Coins on the Water. Alrighty, so with this one, you want to go ahead and ground pound this red switch over here. And what that does is it activates all of the red coins on the lake. And now we have a timer. I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, slowest blooper here. And we have two minutes to go ahead and go around the entire lake and grab all of the different red coins. To get your first few, you just want to follow this path of coins here. And that'll get you like four or five, I think. That's red coin number four. Wrap around and... Yeah, there's a fifth one over here. Red coins 6, 7, and 8 are going to be a bit harder to get, and this might be where you die, because after you get all of the red coins, you get controls taken away for a second and the camera gets all weird. Uh, red coin uh, number 6 is right by the yellow submarine. Uh, I'd make a Beatles reference here, but I haven't... My bad. I'd make a Beatles reference there, but I haven't actually listened to that song, so... Yeah, just goes to show how uncultured I am. Alright, that's red coin number six. Let's wrap around for this one. You probably want to go at, at this from the side. And then make a turn right here. Ugh, this is going to be very tight to get through. Oh, I somehow didn't die by crashing into that. Now just jump onto the dock, and if you successfully do that, you'll have gotten shine number six. Rico Harbor episode number 7, Shadow Mario Revisited. Just like before, Shadow Mario has appeared and it's our job to go ahead and spray him with flood and make sure he doesn't get away. If you want to do those big sprays that I've been doing, whoop, uh, like this right here, in order to do that, you need to uh, you need to spam R, but you need to make sure you press it fully down, uh, so that you know how normally if you press R all the way down, it makes it so that you stand still and spray everywhere. Uh, you need to press R all the way down and also spam jump as well. Anyways, back to the epic chase over here. This one can be a bit difficult for some, because he can start jumping around all these platforms. But if you get a good combo on him, he should be down in a few seconds. Fully, I'll remember this. I'm not really sure if that's a good voice for him, but 
I don't know. It seems kind of fitting. That's shine number 15 overall and shine number 7 of this level, meaning we are done with Rico Harbor. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and continue on down to the beach here, fight that pile of goo, and see where the third world leads us. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!